Hello and welcome back. And for those of you that have been looking at Terramaster NAS, maybe you're an existing Terramaster NAS owner, or you're thinking about getting one of their more affordable solutions in 2022, I'm pleased to say that Terramaster have allowed me to have a little look at a preview version of their new upcoming release, TOS 5.0. This is quite an early build, but I've decided that I think it's worth it to show you guys a lot online. Just a little bit of the improvements that I've seen in this. I've talked about Terramaster and TOS in the last few versions as they've released a lot of their hardware and I've got to say for the most part I'm pretty impressed by this preview again this isn't a full review it'd be a bit mean to fully review uh, software that isn't completed I'm just going to talk about some of the things about this software that I really really like I'm just going to guide you through it and do you know what let's just leap straight in so let's log straight into this software one of the things that I really liked early doors is I quite like this new login screen. It feels a lot more responsive. It logs in very, very fast. And this is going to be definitely one of the big things I've taken away from this preview of the software of TOS Fine, and it's the speed. They've definitely tightened things up. One of my earliest um, comments I always said about TerraMaster is that although they are most certainly a more affordable brand and they don't really have the kind of marketing power and huge 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 budget of some of the other companies out there what you are getting is still quite an advanced little machine there that will that although it lacks some of the ai features of its contemporaries certainly if you're looking for an affordable affordable network attached storage solution it's pretty damn good and one of the things that's really hit me very early doors about this is just how fast and responsive this new software feels um, I don't know if they've tightened some stuff in the kernels in the background, but even when I'm flicking between a lot of the options, they do seem to open up very, very fast. And you're going to see that in a lot of the file access in just a moment. But for now, let's go in. We've already looked at that login screen there. So let's go into the storage manager. So if we go into the storage manager here, I've already created a couple of volumes. I've created a nice, easy RAID 1 configuration here. Again, with a couple of drives inside. Again, you will see no valid data appearing a lot of the time, and I think that is a lot to do with the preview there, where some things haven't been fully filled in yet. Um, if we go, we can create new volumes quite easily, it should be said. Again, we've already got the volume construction there of a couple of them in place. If we go to the hard drives there, we've got a lot more information about the drives themselves and things that are getting monitored. We've got the usual stuff there. If there is hot iron wolf management, it appears there. All the usual options. And again, all of that stuff, such as the external uh, USB that we've connected, all of it largely visible, and everything, once again, responding very, very fast indeed. Now, with regards to creating users, that's still pretty bare bones. You know, I kind of wish there was a few more options there, but I think that's a small criticism for what we're seeing there. And user groups as well, they've not really taken things too far forward on that. Um, I will say again... One of the things I noticed about early development, this isn't a criticism, bear in mind. They've not had a chance to kind of do some of the effects I can see when you hover over and something would be black. So sometimes during the kind of uh, walkthrough of this preview, a lot of the things we've seen is some of the icons not changing color when we highlight over them. But it's a very small thing, and this is still an in-development build. Um, so we've got the user creation there. If we go into the user options there at the top, you may have noticed, as you can see there, not only have we got the usual stuff to do with login credentials and stuff there, but we've also got the usual two-step verification there, added in nice and fast, the usual change in backgrounds and all the rest of it sort of stuff there, easy options all the way through. As I say, it's I'm not going to say it's completely no frills because there are a few nice features, but if, if what you're wanting is very fast, responsive storage, TerraMaster have really stepped things up there. Now, if we go into the option settings there, we've got a nice little option again. They've added a media indexing option here, which I know seems like something a lot of brands have always provided in one shape or form, but TerraMaster didn't really have an easy access to that. So, for example, if we wanted to use the USB drives that I've added to this system, and we want to add the photo data, we can go ahead and make that a photo repository nice and simple it's going to index the media in there and again a lot of the controls have been updated as well and how things are visualized as well is a great deal um better presented than it was before and again let's really focus on the responsiveness here something that TerraMaster has is you always have to go into it with a slight degree of patience and i'm glad that's something we're seeing kind of uh, moved away from here. Same goes with the backup option there. They've now been brought in by default into the top menu. Um, one thing that I've not seen as a big update here, 
um, if we go into the application center, unfortunately, we can't see many of the apps. As this is still an in-progress build, you can't really install any of the third-party applications into it, even if you try to uh, upload uh, a manual installation. Unfortunately, you're not really able to, because this is a newer version and therefore wouldn't be compatible. But even then, they've added a lot of the default factors very early doors there. And again, you can add them in very, very quickly. And I don't know if this is going to be a public beta anytime soon. I still wouldn't say risk your total data in this migration. I was able to maintain and keep all of the shared files from previous uh, TerraMaster tests and my setup guide coming soon. But again, if we move in even more, we can go in and we still can't see thumbnails there, which is a bit of a shame there. But if we go into images, go into my Plex data, I'll show you how um, visual images are shown. So if we go into... Um, one of these folders here we can make our way in and again instantaneous opening there just immediately straight away files are being opened we can have a look there and again still not a huge amount of stuff we can do on information unfortunately that metadata scraping isn't quite as available in those areas we can go into the properties there but they're not really doing much with the metadata at this stage which is a real shame but again as i say it's all about the level of what you're wanting and whether you want general file management or not Next, we can go into video files, and again, we'll go with Little Shop of Horror, something we've used before, and we can see it immediately plays inside the web browser, nice and quick. And again, lovely responsiveness. Yes, we are, of course, accessing this device via the local area network, but still, it's nice to have all of those options. And again, we can enable picture-in-picture picture as well, which is pretty cool. So we can leave that movie there playing in the background as we go through the rest of our features. If we wanted to go for music, for example, so if we go into the music um, uh, folder there, go into Home Alone, we can go ahead and click Play. And again, while the movie's playing there in the background, we can go ahead and play a lot of that stuff there. Obviously, I've disabled this. So unfortunately, you're not able to hear this. Um, in the background there unfortunately because of YouTube copyright rules but still it's nice to have the option to be able to play all these files immediately inside uh, now if we come out there let's remove that get rid of that tab we can have a look at the improvements to the resource monitor now the resource monitor is another area where I'm quite impressed by a lot of the background information of the NAS has been kind of upscaled and improved a lot of it to do with like network management there um, fan control has been uh, and monitoring has been built into the same user interface there which is pretty good and again all of those resource monitors all on a single screen the presentation may seem a little gray let's be honest but it's still providing a lot more information at a single window than previous iterations of this software were able to provide and all of that via that lovely single window interface there and again, all of it being broken down quite readily and quite easily all the way through those options, once again, being fantastically responsive. Alongside this, hardware control has been improved as well. Back into the hardware panel, we can go into hardware and power. And from there, we've always had those options before about being able to control the system a little bit. But now it's just been a lot cleaner in its presentation now with the way a lot of these options are presented and where they are living inside the system. It's all been kind of tightened up. I particularly like this self-isolation mode option here, which I believe is a work in progress. Um, and if you have enabled remote access to the system, so that's remote access via the internet, if you're slightly concerned about access, it's a single button click that disconnects the NAS from remote internet access regardless. So you don't have to worry about playing around with the ports or physically disconnecting the port. This mode will just in one click disable remote access to the NAS very quickly. And that's something I think a lot of other NAS brands could actually implement this one click turn on off system. They have something not dissimilar to that, but not in such a, an easily presented way. And that about wraps it up for this very early preview of TOS 5 for TerraMaster NAS. Again, there are other applications we could talk about, like those ones that we installed earlier on. We have the ability, for example, with enabling that um, multimedia server to have a greater degree of support of different mu multimedia, something that wasn't quite as present in previous versions of TerraMaster's TOS platform. Likewise, cloud synchronization with third-party cloud services has been made a great deal easier with more platforms being supported than the three that were there before. 
So again, lots of little improvements all the way through and the presentation of these options is really what I wanna see. Of course, this isn't a full review. We're still waiting for the full software to be publicly available as well as seeing some of the other key applications that may come out in the future. One of the um, weaknesses of TerraMaster has always been in the applications that it provides. It provides a lot of the bare bones stuff and the kind of uh, day one um, office application type stuff and particularly file management but the more interesting applications such as surveillance <coughs> virtual machines and more have always been handed over to third parties particularly along the lines of AI supported services too so I'm hoping as uh, TOS 5 further through development that we see more things on that but for now let's wrap things up that's been TOS 5 the preview I hope you've enjoyed it let me know what you guys think in the comments and maybe TerraMaster is watching this and will take note Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.